There's a huge number of day sailors here, which means that these boats are for daytime sailing only. We're at the boat show, Boot Dusseldorf 2023, and we decided to make a separate video dedicated to these beautiful, elegant tiny yachts. Let's see what's new in 2023 on the day sailor market. Germany is one of the biggest markets for day sailors, so let's take a closer look. Let's go. This is Sasha Gorin, and you are on the Interpris Yacht Channel. Today we talk in detail about what day sailors really are, and see some of the best yachts at Boot Dusseldorf. Let's go! This place is filled with day sailors, and for that reason we decided to make a detailed video about these yachts, here at Boot Dusseldorf exhibit. It's hard for me to say which one is the most beautiful, because they all are quite something, and very attention-grabbing. These are graceful, and full of tender femininity boats. And here we have a day sailor from Ersterreich. And this is a city in Austria. The refinement of minimalism, that is the main word I'd use to describe this yacht. And I think that one cannot just pass it by without admiring it first, just to lift your spirit up, and soak in all that beauty, since it's an incredibly eye-catching boat. This shipyard makes several models of day sailors, starting at 27 feet long. But recently they announced the sizes 33 and 39. The 33 is presented here, and it says right there, WLTPRMRE in German. I did wonder why it says World Premiere, even though we had seen this yacht at other exhibitions. This is what the owner of the shipyard said, because in this edition of the yacht, we added a tiller. So previously, these yachts had steering wheels, and now there is a version with a tiller. The boat definitely captivates with its gracefulness, so let's take a closer look at it together. Let us deviate from our usual tradition, and show you this boat from the foredeck first. This bowsprit is definitely a piece of art, and it's covered with matte lacquer, to highlight all the beauty and elegance of the carbon. And it's long enough to put downwind sails here, if the wind is not too strong. If there's a light breeze, the trip will be as smooth as it can be. The cuts are very clean and minimalistic, which is a very neat approach, since there is no locker, and no mooring pipe for the anchor chain. The owner of the shipyard said that it's not really all that necessary, just drop the rope, wrap it around this fantastic snatch cleat, and that's all. This is just a day sailor, and to be completely honest he is right. For the deck they used this natural, beautiful teak wood, and as I said previously, this wood is very popular on such yachts, especially for the design purposes. It's really simple to maintain such a small boat. But look at how big this for deck is. There's plenty of room to wallow, sunbathe, and even throw a party. This is a decent hatch, installed on the same level as the deck, and the size of the forecastle is all the way to the stem, which allows us to confidently use an automatic staysail, and the track are also almost hidden in the deck. I think that this yacht with an automatic jib should sail well. Now let's pay attention to the cabin, where minimalism is at its finest as well. There are no portholes here, but in this case, they would really ruin the smooth, beautiful look of the cabin. And take a look at this very interesting solution, the cabin is lifted just a little. First of all, it visually adds some kind of weightlessness to it, but at the same time, all the wiring is hidden in here, and it goes all the way back. Great solution for this boat, and I'm simply delighted. Once again, the owner of the shipyard got rid of lifting keels, and left fixed keel only, so there's minimalism everywhere on this boat. I also want to talk right away about the displacement, and the ballast. The total displacement of the boat is 2,600 kilograms, and half of them are in the bulb. Can you imagine the racing potential of this thing? 
I think it can even sail under the wind. Let's move on. The mast is made of carbon, and pay attention to the boom bang. It is electrohydraulic, which means that everything is controlled with the push of a button. You won't spill your champagne while sailing this thing, since everything is automated as much as humanly possible. Electric boom vang, electric winches, for such a small yacht this is very, very interesting. Again, she has half the ballast hidden in the keel, and she has a carbon mast. I'd like to walk on this boat and get a sense of how it feels. Let's move on to the cockpit. So we entered this huge cockpit, and let me remind you that this is a 33-foot yacht, yet the cockpit here is very large. The sides are expanded, resulting in a very large swimming area, I can even see a perfect spot for a ladder. The snatch cleats are on the inside of the yacht, which is also an interesting solution, and before me is a marvelous tiller, made of the purest carbon. As mentioned before, this yacht comes in two versions, with a tiller and with a steering wheel. As you can see, it's very spacious. And look, here we have either an electric or diesel engine. The electric engine here is definitely a great choice, since the boat is very light, narrow, as it should be. So respectively I think work great even with a low power source, and the battery reserve will be enough even if we compare it to the diesel engine. We do we have here, looks like it's carbon thrusts. From what I can tell, they're removable, and you can install a cockpit table here. Take a look at these lovely seats, with the back pillows, it is quite comfortable to sit here. And notice this unique control design. All the jammers are hidden in these empty spaces, and this is done for the sake of getting rid of some visual noise, and at the same time they are protected from the sun, and from water splashes. It is very fascinating that the control of the electric winch is placed under your feet, since this way you can control the winch with your foot. And let's have a look into our cabin. The cabins are the most important and attractive part of the day sailors, and this one is quite spacious, even though I can see that it's not fully equipped yet. But pay attention to this, there is a dedicated toilet right there, and this is very, very important, especially for the female half of the yachting community. Also, there are two portholes, but I have a feeling they're mainly for ventilation purposes and rain protection. The mast here is like in real racing yachts, it rests on the keel, and is very reliable. I see some other leads here, so I'll be sure to ask what they are for. I think that you can easily arrange a double bed there, to spend your weekend in the best possible comfort. Over the top of the deckhouse we can see this very serious anti-fouling, which you'll need if you're working on a sail, but the size of the boat makes it all very easy for the user. This is a very pleasant boat, and I'd say that the concept is definitely unique, sustained, and this simplification does not interfere with the control of the boat at all, since it does not violate any of its navigational capabilities. On the contrary, it only adds to it. I am very delighted with this boat, and we will be waiting for a new model from a shipyard A39. Let's visit another stand. We continue to review day sellers, here at the Boot Dusseldorf exhibit. With each boat I keep telling you that it's the one, but the Rustler 24 is truly one of the most beautiful, classic day sailors. I see the ad for this model quite often, especially in the American sailing magazines. And I always stay on the page for a while, just to admire it once more. Rustler, is truly the pride of British yacht building. They make a big range, boats up to 57 feet, but this Rustler is the smallest, and the most pocket-sized model, and it's very pretty. Just look at it, these are proper classic contours, not neoclassical as many people believe. This is a traditional sailboat with a full keel and rudder. I remember our L6 boat, which my father and I had, and it also had the cleanest look, an elegant body that you can admire for hours, so this is really a full-fledged classic, as it is. Moreover guys, you will probably notice that there is no engine on this yacht. Yup, it's nowhere to be found. With such contours and characteristics, this yacht will be a dream to pilot. But funny enough, that doesn't mean that there's no possibility for an engine installation. There are several engine options, such as a small diesel engine nanny, with an electric version as well, and it can be inserted into the rudder, or you can make a suspension bracket for a torpedo or eye propulsion. 
I also noticed the numbers on this boat, and with a displacement of 1640 kilograms, she has a ballast of 940. Which makes the rate over 1 to 2, so I can imagine how she should get by on water. Her mast goes to the keel, and she has a very classic cockpit, which is made of teak wood, and the tiller looks delightful. It's a very safe yacht, and it's almost impossible to turn it over. And despite the fact that it is 7.4 meters long, it has a width of 1.9, so it's very convenient to move it around in a trailer. And thanks to such a narrow hull, I can only imagine how easy and obedient it is to steer, so it is quite possible to moor it without an engine. Let's come closer and see some more, I'll try my best to show you this beautiful boat. Here's the proud British flag, since this is a British classic. Let's take a look inside the cockpit, which I believe is the most classic of all the boats we've seen here. Once again, I'm remembering our old boats, which are still classic, and I remember my trips to the Baltic, where I saw the restored German boats, and in this boat it's all really reminding me of those classic looks. By the way, here you can install the engine, and as the shipyard worker already told us, here you can put refrigerators. Here we see an elegant combing, one that completely encircles the entire cockpit, and it also serves as a back for the sofa, making it very convenient to rest on it. Again, the boat is designed for single-handed use, so you can easily manage it alone. In addition, it's a great place to have fun here, sunbathe, swim, and so on, because there's a lot of empty space on the forecastle and on the stern, which allows you to stretch out on the mattress. And the rest is classic, the mast that goes to the keel. According to the shipyard's representative, it literally takes 15 to 20 minutes to remove or put up the mast. Well, maybe a little more at first, but it's all very easy to do. And here is a staysail without a twist, that's also a classic move. You can see a very deep cockpit, and it protects from the water quite well, so the boat is really very beautiful, and it's very elegant. I just love to rest my eyes on it, and I'd love to get inside as well. Well, maybe some other time, when the timing is right will do just that. And she really meets all the standards of a classic British yacht. Take a look at some of their bigger boats, they are also quite beautiful, and are made up to size 57, as I mentioned before in this video. Take a look at how the color is matched, it's just gorgeous, British racing yacht green. So I definitely recommend their boat, so rule Britannia, and rule Rustler 24, which is a very, very beautiful boat. Now let's go and see what we can find on the other stands. A layout like this one, which will be one of Thomas Tyson's largest 12-meter day sailors, is a big sign that the market is growing. Thomas Tyson is the designer, who made yachts for the America's Cup. The uniqueness of this project is that it will be made of both wood and carbon fiber. Both wood fibers and carbon fibers are the most high-tech materials in yachting, and it'll be interesting to see them together. I will definitely be happy to see the results, and how these two elements will be embedded into one another, it will be epic when it gets into the water. And we will also try to do some kind of review on it, because a 12 meter or 40 foot day sailor is something to see. The demand for day sailors is still growing, and this small mock-up is the best confirmation of this. This is a very interesting stand in my opinion, and here's what I want to ask you. Is it possible to make a yacht out of these small sticks? And I mean a modern, beautiful, fast, and light yacht? I'll give you a hint, these sticks are in fact linen, and you know that they make all sorts of clothing out of it. So they first get the fibers, and then they can make these mats out of the said fiber, and there is a big variety of those. And then they use it to build all sorts of things, including a yacht. This is probably the most environmentally friendly yacht that could ever be invented. I have already seen it at previous exhibitions, but I really wanted to show it to you. This yacht is made of linen, or more precisely linen fiber, and is held together with epoxy resin, a resin of natural origin. This type of resin is made from vegetable oil. And all of it together makes this beautiful and durable body. Right here you can see the fiber itself, since it's sort of see-through. It looks incredibly beautiful, and this brown tint looks a lot like carbon, but with a sepia filter. 
The company is called GRNBOATS, and you really can't imagine a boat greener than this one. As a result, you get this wonderful day sailor. It's light, fast, completely compostable, and it's 100% environmentally friendly. I was very surprised by this boat, now you get to see it too. Let's get a closer look at it now. Well, to me this boat looks a lot like a classic day sailor, and the price tag is from 150 to 200,000 euros, which is the usual market price for such day sailors. Let's start the review from the stern. There's the classical valance. It's quite spacious for a day sailor, and here is where the locker is hidden. It's quite deep and completely dry, and it has the seals too. Let's inspect further. The cockpit is very well made, here you can accommodate up to 6 people very easily. This space here allows you to sunbathe, relax, and here you can place some mattresses. And take a look at these tiny blocks, they're just adorable with their tiny little wooden cheeks. This is a very stylish yacht. Here we have Anderson winches, of good Danish quality, in size 28, there is a very small cabin, but again, its purpose is to only shelter you from rain. And what is an eco-friendly yacht without an eco-friendly engine? Torquedo engine got into here as well, so down here is the engine, and as you can see, it is immersed in water. I love this concept. Spar is from Zeldon, which is a Swedish company. Now let's go around the boat on the other side. And by the way, I didn't show you this just yet, but take a look at this lovely snatch cleat, it's hiding right under here. Soak in this work of art, she is simply charming, graceful, and slender little yacht. I think that she is a fast boat, for very much active owners. You can use it for racing, or you can use it just for day sailing with a glass of champagne. Your female companion should definitely wear a big, beautiful hat. You can easily go for swim from here, and so on. The boat has a lifting keel, and you can see the engine better from here, it's a fairly powerful engine for such a light and narrow yacht. Let's take a closer look at the spars. It's definitely a classic execution, with an aluminum mast from Zeldon, although something out of carbon would definitely look great here, but I think you can order that separately. But take a look at this boom vang, it's most definitely a miniature work of art. It is made out of wood, or to be more specific plywood, which has been thoroughly polished, and on top of it, once again, they use the fiber. It's very well done, and there's just attention to detail, it always pleasantly surprises me. And take a closer look at the sails. The sails of this greenest boat on earth are also green. You can see that they really are green, and they are called frog sail. Some of our team members suggested that they were made out of frog skin, and later stretched, but in reality, it actually is much more interesting. The eco-friendly aspect of these sails is that they don't mix different materials together, so this sail is made entirely of polyester, and can be easily recycled. A sailing workshop from Schleswig, here in Germany, makes these sails. I forgot to mention that the boat is made in Bremen, which is a city here in Germany, so this company is obviously German, and I really think that they will find a buyer for their product here. Although in general, this company is engaged in the production of all kinds of composites, for example, composite panels for wind farms, but it's very nice to see a large company enter the yacht market, and with such an interesting product. Let's move on to another stand guys. And now we are at the stand of the Dutch shipyard Safir. To my understanding, Safir is translated as Sapphire, and it is indeed the Sapphire of the day sailor business, since this particular Dutch shipyard makes day sailors only. Many boat lines are produced in one copy, and most shipyards produce only one or two day sailor models. However, this shipyard offers a wide range of day sailors, beginning with a 6.5 meter boat in the classic style, and ending with the 37th model which I believe is more of a weekender than a day sailor. So in our review of day sailors, we can't forget about this shipyard, since it is probably the largest shipyard for day sailors. Here's Kai. Kai is a shipyard sales manager. So Kai, uh, I just told that maybe your biggest uh, day sailors uh, producer in the world uh, 
Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we are uh, at the moment uh, by far the biggest uh, day sailor manufacturer in the world. We started uh, 25 years ago mm -hmm. with, uh, with our classic line, so mm -hmm. classic six and a half. Mm -hmm. uh, and we changed this over over the years to a eight meter cabin, an eight meter open. And, and over the years, we even introduced a modern line mm -hmm. day sailor in several models right now. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, we do have uh, six models mm -hmm. spread from six and a half meter to 12 meter. Okay, what was the idea? Why you start with Day Sailor? Uh... Well, uh, the, the, the real story behind this is that father of the two brothers who run the company mm -hmm. right now, Richard, he already had a shipyard back in the 60s in Sydney in Australia. Mm -hmm. And uh, after traveling around the world for eight years uh, with a boat built by himself, a 65-foot catch, they came on land in Imaiden and then he started a shipyard for uh, manufacturing on big fishing trawlers. But then in 1998, the marina in, in Imaiden, in Holland, where we're still located, was built and he wanted to build a small day sailor to sail around the Imaiden Bay. And that's basically how it started. We went to the boat show in 1999 with the first boat and uh, this meant that we sold 14 boats on one boat show. So yeah, then, then you have to build all these boats so you have a, a new shipyard and a new company. Mm. So that's basically how we all started from an idea of ourselves and then yeah, the people people liked it and that this we involved into a company with uh, 150 boats a year nowadays and we have about Whoa. 70 uh, as you employees. heard the shipyard is 25 years old and since my very first visit to dusseldorf which was about 17 years ago i got to see a small sapphire boat it was very elegant and with classic contours and it attracted a lot of attention and until recently sapphire's been making classic yachts only Let's ask him why did the company make such a sudden transition? Yeah, until uh, I guess it's until 10 years ago, we uh, mainly did the, the, the classic lines, but we felt the need of a performance driven, super comfortable, easy to handle mm -hmm. and easy to sail single handed day sailor. Mm -hmm. And so we designed the SE23 mm -hmm. in the first case. After this, we did the SE33 Ultimate Day Sailor, mm -hmm. which was the previous one of this one. And so on, we moved into the modern line Dane Sailors. Mm -hmm. So now we have the brand new SE24 Lite, mm -hmm. the SE27 Leisure, mm -hmm. the SE33 Life, and then we have still the, our biggest one is the SE37 mm -hmm. Lounge. And of course, I was attracted by this bright red boat. This is honestly more of a Ferrari, a Ferrari in essence, a Ferrari in speed. The Dutch really know how to make boats, and no one can compare with them in this matter. Look how beautiful she is with this carbon steering wheel, and the color scheme that is very well chosen. Combination of dark grey and beige goes well with the deck, and this bright red hull makes this boat quite stylish. I'm not sure, but I think the Italians helped out a little, because this Dutch boat has an Italian feel to it. The boat is stunning on the inside, which means it has a very well finished mini cabin, as much as it's possible for a Safir day sailor of 27 feet. This is definitely a lovely boat. So I'm on board this beautiful Safir 27, which is 27 feet, 2.6 meters wide, it's a comfortable boat with just one steering wheel, but at the same time I can go around the wheel quite freely. Look at the steering positions, everything here is quite beautiful and well made, and the color scheme still feels very Italian to me, even though the Dutch themselves also know how to do it quite well. Grey, red, and beige are among the color options, and they work well together. Here's a tiny spray hood, and you can put a bimini here if you want. Everything is quite practical, which makes it a practical day sailor. And what do we have here? It's a track and traveler. And whenever you need it, this cushion can be removed. Just like this, it can be easily removed. And the traveler runs smoothly on the track on the chase. There's a huge number of well-integrated soft parts on this boat, and it's needed so that you, you, your spouse, and the children will feel comfortable here, spending the weekend in comfort. This boat is 27 feet long, so it only comes with an electric motor. Here we see a torpedo motor with a throttle control, and there is already an autopilot installed, so you can go a little further into the sea. You'll also notice the winch here, and take a look at this red switch. 
This right here is a winch that works in two directions, and you can ease your sheet with a push of a button. This is definitely a high-tech day sailor, which is honestly great. Now let's move into the cockpit, and right away I don't see any tables, but I think it is possible to place a folding table somewhere in here. Inside, there is a fairly spacious cabin with a removable toilet, cup holders, and if you think it's all too spartan, don't forget what day sailors are made for. These are quite comfortable backrests, and very nice cockpit, with a nice back support. This part of the boat doesn't have any controls, and the winches start here. There are four of them in total, and two of them work in both directions. I only ever saw this on the Hulbergrasse yacht. The price for this model starts at 94,000 euros. Its displacement is almost 2 tons, and almost half of it is in the keel, so once again, the boat promises to be quite fast in the water. And as you can see in the video, she glides quite well over the water, her moves are simply admirable. Let's move on to another boat. Okay, and uh, who is client, who is buyer of your boats? It's very, very a broad range, obviously. For the yeah. starter, uh, in, in our SE24 Lite, we are looking for the, the, the young professional, which just earned basically their, their, their first big money. Mm -hmm. And they want to spend time with friends and family, mm -hmm. uh, especially with young kids. So it's a very protected mm -hmm. cockpit, but also in the afternoon or later on a, on a different day to go out with friends and then really go on for, for some performance mm -hmm. and with the big janiker and then play out, mm -hmm. do some uh, small club racing, but mainly focused on people who want to admire quality and want to be in full comfort and control when they're behind the wheel. We moved on to the 24th model, and this is also a modern line, with the latest contours and this lovely stem. This yacht is yearning for speed, at least this is what it feels like to me. At the same time, it has an affordable price, starting at 69,000 euros. I love the bold colors in which the boat is painted, there's bright green, black, and this orange color. I like it, and I think it looks really cool. The tiller appears to be very fashionable, and the cockpit is built in a very convenient way, since it goes right into the transom, from which you can get up here, to spend some time in the sun or sail on a fresh breeze. It is a gorgeous boat, and it's also the cheapest day sailor in the Saphir line. In case you don't like the color for whatever reason, you can repaint it and order any color you'd like. And the inside cabin is also quite sensible for a yacht this size, so in this yacht everything is in its place. What is your favorite, Safir? Uh, they all have they all have something different. No, so. no, your sales manager, but yeah, 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 yeah look yeah, like yeah, you're like sailor. No, 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 but they they really do have all something different. If you want to have a young family uh, and you want to play outside like uh, with your friends, then the 24 is, mm -hmm. is the very perfect boat. But if you're downscaling from from a 50 foot mm -hmm. and you just want to have a, a comfortable day sailor, which is easy to handle, but still has a lot of comfort inside, uh, including a toilet, a, a separate toilet, a stove running water, fridge, then the 33 mm -hmm. might be the best option. The 33rd Saphir model is pretty much a full-fledged yacht, it has a dedicated toilet in the cabin, and the cabin itself is quite big. As you can see, a selection of colors stays the same, this mousy gray mixed with a darker shade on the controls, and orange pillows on the couch, that don't restrict your movement around the boat, and are at the same time very comfortable. There are two steering wheels, giving you proper control of the boat, and a chart plotter, which is a revolutionary step for a day sailor. Winches are also present, and they are two-sided, and everything is done quite sensibly. It really is almost a proper yacht, and I think that it can already be used for much more than just day sailing, since most people, even experienced cruisers, are already using them as weekenders. This boat doesn't need all that expensive maintenance too, so it is somewhat cost-saving to have this model. An automatic stay sail is also present in this model, indicators panel is on the mast, and this boat will definitely know its way on water. Let's see what we have here. Here is the proper dashboard, a Yenmar diesel engine, and we have autopilot control here. In this model there's also a windlass, and its controls are also here, so this is pretty much all there is. Let's finish our tour of this beautiful stand with this classic model, Saphir 8M, which is quite popular too. 
I don't even know how many years it's been, but it's been on the market for dozens of years, and there is still demand for classic models. This model is 8 meters long, with a classic cockpit, but with a modern cabin. So, and last questions about future, electric, uh, solar panel, yeah, or? Well, we basically in these two things, we are already in. Yeah. This model is completely electric and yeah. only electric, so yeah. no diesel engine possible. On the other one, we, al we already do have uh, solar panels and it's only electric, and all our models, mm -hmm. uh, even on, up till the 20, uh, 37, yeah. uh, it's possible to do electric. Guy, okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, enjoy your day. Well, this is it for our review of Day Sailor Yachts, so what can we take away from this exhibition? To begin with, the day sailing market is evolving. New models and brands emerge each year, as do new shipyards. I asked a lot of shipyards, who is your client, and I heard very interesting answers. The clientele is very different for everyone, there are different generations with different requirements, yet day sailors are becoming popular among everyone. Third of all, you will agree that these boats are incredibly beautiful. When you are not burdened with the task of building so many cabins on a yacht, you can pay attention and focus on the very elegant, most feminine nature of yachting, and make a really unique, absolutely charming yacht, for many wonderful adventures. So I really like it. My name is Sasha Gorin, and if you want to learn how to sail a yacht, or you want to buy it, please be sure contact me, and my team will help you in your mission. Glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Yeah.